Hey, okay everybody, so welcome to the final week of class. It's week 14 and I'm just lecturing uh, from home today because I've got to take my daughter to the airport. Uh, so I want to just go ahead and get into the, the main topic for this week, which is the Solar Forge. And um, this was an idea that I uh, came up with, gosh, uh, three or four years ago uh, as part of our practicum our summer practicum and if, if you're thinking about taking that I do want to show you that uh, that page so if you go to the renewable energy or sustainable energy technology or energy technology page here it is and I think we've got a just a little special link to the practicum uh, it's just sitting right down here in our GY 195 practicum we have the dates set up already so that's going to be june 13th to 24th in missoula and then june 27th to july 8th in, in browning um, so a few years ago um, i came up with the idea to uh, um, make heat without setting something on fire I, I, is is really what we're after and if you haven't read it i also want to remind you to take a look at amory lovin's Reinventing Fire. Let me bring that one up. Um, here's Amory Lovins' Reinventing Fire. So, you know, you look at that book, and uh, our our species has thrived on making fire and and uh, controlling it, manipulating it. Uh, really, since and, and, and I think in a lot of ways, fire even. Uh, defines our species. It's what uh, kept us safe from predators. Uh, it's allowed us to cook food. Uh, now allows us to stay warm. But as we know, <clears throat> the uh, CO2 emissions in the atmosphere continue to build. I did hear just yesterday, and I, um, you know, if you if you've taken my 101 or 102 courses, you've you've seen those uh, CO2 emissions curves climbing and climbing. You know, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they might have actually taken a dip uh, this year for the first time. So I encourage everybody when you're um, out there over uh, winter break to go and see what the C CO2 emissions were for uh, 2014, see what they were for 2015, and it sounds like uh, carbon emissions have actually dipped a little bit this past year. Now, a few things drive that. Um, the um, uh, increasing renewable energy technology portfolio that we see uh, across the world is one factor. Another one is just economic slowdown. So I, I, what I've heard is that the, de the global demand for commodities has decreased. A lot of those commodities are manufactured and shipped from China. So that's also been something that uh, drove down carbon emissions. Another thing that tends to do it is when you have an increase in fuel prices, people buy less of it, they carpool, uh, find other forms of transportation rather than personal automobiles, and that does it as well. But uh, the big picture is uh, all of these modes of transportation, energy sources that I've been measuring, uh, in, uh, typically involve setting something on fire. And what is that? Well, it's, it's burning ancient carbon that's been sequestered in the ground in, in the form of coal oil or natural gas. So uh, if you want to build a, a forge, there's you know a couple different ways to do it. One is to, is to use a gas forge. Uh, earlier this year, Shelly Mitchell and I used a propane forge to, um, uh, to um, extract some gold from a, from a um, little ball or, or, or chunk of, of gold dust that, we, that uh, she had collected from her experiments. Um, another way, though, is, is just to use a magnifying glass. So I'm, I'm sure you've seen the, the, the jokes or the, the little skits where kids are setting ants on fire with magnifying glasses. You've probably also, uh, if, if you've been a, a scout, you might have used a, a magnifying glass to start a fire, a campfire. But there's another way, and that's just using the sun's energy to get things hot. Um, right now, and I'll, I'll just take you right back to um, the solar constant. So we'll do a little bit of math on this. 
um, in terms of how much energy and heat you might actually get from a solar forge. So if the uh, sun's here and um, radiation is, is coming into your technology, it's coming in at about um, 1,000 uh, watts per square meter. So that's the solar constant. It can be higher, um, up to up to 1,300 or 1,400, but 1,000 watts per square meter is a good back of the envelope uh, standard to use in terms of how much uh, radiation is coming into a given uh, chunk of real estate. Now, uh, what we're going to do is send that to a lens, and that lens is then going to concentrate all of that energy on a, on a small spot. So if we just have a, a small crucible of some type, something in the, in the uh, focus of this lens, and we've been using Fresnel lenses. Um, neat thing about the Fresnel lens is it's, it's actually flat. Uh, these are used in, in projectors frequently, and you can see right now we're sort of doing the opposite of projecting. We're, we're, we're focusing the energy, but the Fresnel lens, if you look at the profile, actually has a bunch of little uh, little lenses built in. So uh, I'm not going to do it quite justice, but just imagine a bunch of little lenses. If you can go out. In fact, let's just go take a look at it online. No lens. Yeah, so here's a, let's just look at some images. It'd be nice to see the profile. Yeah, so this guy right here is, is more or less what I was trying to draw. Little, little mini lenses uh, on a planar surface ends up giving you a um, uh, focal point. Now, in like in a projection system, this is what's happening. You have your, your image here, and it's projected out towards uh, a screen. But what we're doing with our solar forge is the same thing, just in reverse. So the sun's, so take all these arrows from the sun, and that then becomes, instead of a light source, it becomes a heat sink. So we've, we've just taken the Fresno lens and, and turned it backwards, and now I've got a heat sink. Okay, and we've, we've built one of these. I'll take you to the report. Oh, conferences, courses, energy technology practicum. And it was 2013 when we did this. Uh, Grant Myrie was on that team. Hello, Grant Myrie. Come on. So I'll, I'll apologize on behalf of my word. Uh, installation it's not quite cooperating okay so let's get down here um, and this was a this was a draft and while I'm going through here I might mention a few things let's let's just see what this team said in their executive summary um, finding a source or alternative to offset our growing fossil fuel demands to sustain life on this planet is a, is a factual issue that can no longer be swept under the rug by the oil empires to govern our lives and nations. Oh my gosh, so Republican. Peak oil, uh, fossil fuels, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know the rest. Um, the power of solar luminosity, here we go, has the potential to produce enough energy to meet many of the world's daily energy demands. Very good. Uh, the solar forge we constructed was designed for the industrial application of melting materials by producing heat without using a carbon burning power source. There we go. Perfect. Uh, we'll explore the theoretical power that can be produced, discuss the actual results of our forge, and enlighten you on other applications that this technology can be used for. The technology that needs to be invested to harness this power should be a high priority for all the nations of the world. Well said, my man. Okay. Um, so they do a little background. Uh, here's a pretty wild-looking lens. This, this must be for... Gosh, this must be for a lighthouse. I'm not, not even sure. It's been a while since I, I looked at this. Uh, so it's not a brand new technology. There's the um, uh, cross-section like I showed previously. Um, 
Okay, so they're actually, okay, so they <laughs> actually done a little bit of math and said in Montana we could be doing 74 terawatts of solar energy. Uh, that's that's pretty good because the global demand, I, I forgot these guys even put that in there. Global net demand for energy is 16 terawatts. A lot of that is carbon-based, but it looks like if we just captured all the sunshine in Montana, stored it, pumped it around the planet, uh, we, we could support several Earth's worth of energy. Okay, well, that's, that's great to see those big numbers. Um, and then they're comparing that to coal. Even in square miles, look at that. Uh, need 32 square miles. That's not that big to offset all of Montana's coal plants. Huh. Cool. And 3,000 square miles if you do it all with PV. Impressive. There you go, guys. Okay. Um, these guys do a great job with this. Energy storage, electrical and thermal, holy grail of energy tech. Okay. Oh, and then they, they took a book, a uh, shot out of one of our books showing that usually it's, um, you got a, you have a lot of sunshine when you don't need it. It's, it's sunny in the summer when you, have, when you want the cool. So what we have to do as a, as a species here is, is get our act together on seasonal thermal storage, and that means either seasonal thermal for hot or seasonal thermal for cool, so we don't quit having to set fire to things. Okay, so here's a couple solar ovens. These are, uh, and I, I wanna say these were designed by um, uh, some engineers at, at MIT. I don't, I don't know exactly how they work, but uh, there's another great alternative to uh, you know, burning that nice lush forest you see everybody uh, next to there. Okay. Um, so we've done some, some specific heat calculations. You, you've seen these before. Uh, we did this for gold already, and these students did it for copper. And what they, what they came up with is um, the, a, a calculation that you can melt a penny in three seconds. So what we're looking at here, let's, let's just see where they're getting this uh, 540 joules per second. Um, oh, that's, that's how. So 540 joules per second, it's, well, that's the, that's the same as 540 watts. So if we go back to the picture that I just drew, it means that their, um, their lens, so I'm just going to draw this little chunk right here, their, their lens right here, this is the 2013 lens, and it was approximately 0 0.5 square meters. So that's where they're getting um, this number from. So they got the specific heat of copper. I think the I think it's actually uh, zinc, but they're going to get similar results. They're both metals with similar specific heats. There's the mass. Here's the here's the change in temperature. So with that, um, <clears throat> and yeah, they they didn't they didn't quite get their units right here. This should be kilo, um, kilojoules. per kilogram per Kelvin. Yeah, that, didn't, that didn't come out that great. But you can see then when you multiply by kilograms here in the middle, Kelvin's on the end, um, you end up with joules, and then you divide that by the power. So what they're, all they're doing here is getting, um, going right back to our energy equation where um, uh, power equals energy over time, so they just rearrange this equation to say that time equals power divided by, or I'm sorry, power equals energy divided by power, and that's what gave them the 2.9 seconds. 
And it, it was it was pretty close when we used when we used the forge, which I'll show you shortly. Those pennies just evaporated right right in front of your eyes, and we, um, you know, again without without actually burning anything. Okay, so here's the um, here's the lens. You can sort of see the the sky upside down uh, behind it. Um, here's building. <laughs> Poor Grant Myrie, man. He always had trouble with his pants, so we made sure to make that seem a little more discreet. I think he was making a, um, a statement saying how, how hard he was working there. Uh, so they, they built a wooden frame. Would have been nice to have metal because of the flammability issues, but they were careful, uh, safe, and put in uh, these fire bricks and used goggles because you're, you're, you're more or less looking at the sun. It, it, it's, I mean, imagine staring at the sun and then staring at uh, about, about 10 times that amount of energy density. So they uh, looked at water, they looked at aluminum, uh, they did a few calculations similar to what they did for the penny. Um, okay, so and then they looked at different uh, reflective constants, so different materials, black absorbing energy better than, than white, and how much, uh, how much power was coming out. Okay, so I don't want to dwell on this uh, too much. Oh, well, they, and they did make a neat little uh, lead figurine, so they were able to melt lead. Uh, they got the thermal imaging camera out, and we're hitting um, hitting temperatures above a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, there's four 420 right there, and again, this is just just with sunshine and a, and a Fresno lens. Okay. Um, okay. So that was that was a fun project. Um, it, it, it's it's a technology that that does need to be refined because as, as I mentioned uh, last week there are several different modes by which we can separate uh, materials chemical electrical mechanical uh, and right here is, is a perfect example of a, of a thermal technology that can be used to uh, allow uh, smaller lighter more volatile elements to rise and then heavier ones to drop and then you can get everything out of your recycling stream all elements for a zero waste solution and again without the need for combustion. So uh, if anyone wants to take that and, and run with it a little bit it'd be it'd be great to see this this uh, document this practicum report referenced and uh, used in your own own research for recycling. Um, you know if you're doing something in plastics you can look at the specific heat of your plastic and see what kind of temperatures you might want to hit. Um, my recommendation there, if you're going to, would be to build a heat exchanger so that you've got a, a water bath that's circulating and heat is being pumped into it with the solar forge. And then uh, just because plastics uh, are much more temperature sensitive, uh, you, get them, you get them too hot, they're just going to vaporize um, unless you have a special uh, vacuum, um, vacuum set up. But Think about that in your engineering design for refining whatever material it is that you're using on your project. And I'll see everybody on Thursday. And good luck on your finals next week, too.